Hello everybody and welcome back to Mass Effect Legendary Edition where currently it's been a while since I've been able to play the game. Um, but I am set up in my sister's office right now, her and her husband's office, because they are out at work. In, you know, everyone, not everyone, but lots of people are kind of going back into the office, so I'm getting to, and I have my fancy, like, 250 hertz monitor, and my, like, super high quality, great, uh, tower going. It's, it's good. It's good. Uh, however, I still can't get the recording to record in 60, in 1080p and 60 frames per second. <laughs> so, while I'm seeing it at an excellent fresh rate... You guys might be seeing it at 30 still, and if I can figure that out, I will at some point. But right now, I just really want to play the game. I'm also playing with an Xbox controller that I borrowed, so hopefully I won't suck as much. I know last time I was having issues because the controller I was using was very bulky. I still don't know why Vanguard doesn't get beefy armor. We're literally throwing ourselves in. Hey, 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 let's, let's talk to you. Let's bother you. Good day, Commander. Whoa. The human ambassador is up the stairs, first room on the right. How do you, you, know, who how do you I am? know me? Yes, I receive reports on all newly arrived dignitaries and notable people. Usually she's typing, at least in the old ones, she's, she was like typing the whole time and she had like an earpiece in, I swear. What is this place? This is the Presidium. More specifically, you are at the Citadel Embassies. If you have more questions, please access Savine. Please stop talking to me. <laughs> I kind of oh, I think she's she's there. She's a receptionist, but she's not like a, an information kiosk, you know. Um, what's that? Oh, Avina is the virtual guide for the Citadel. Feel free to access the terminal yourself. Oh man, I'm so excited. I've been running errands all morning, getting car stuff done. But I set all my stuff up earlier today. And now I'm just gonna sit in here and play video games for the next like 24 hours. It's gonna be so great. Mm. At this time, you'll have watched it. Like you guys will have watched it, but currently at this time, I just finished encoding episode one through five and rendering them for YouTube. Um, and then I will upload them to YouTube today or tomorrow. So woo! you guys will have already seen it by now, obviously, if you're watching this. But I'm excited. <laughs> But I am trying to get a bunch of, a bunch of game, game episode stuff done. It's gonna be exciting. What's your name? What do you do here? My name is Sephiria. I'm the administrative assistant for the embassy. Oh, now she's typing a little. You seem to be distracted. The embassies are the hub of all Citadel politics. <laughs> when you represent trillions of citizens, it tends to get a little bit. Her like, her like right eye, she's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it looks like it's like twitching I should be going now have a pleasant day but now uh, being in this room I feel like I won't bother my sister and her husband quite as much and I can be a little louder and you guys won't have to hear them like doing dishes and stuff in the background so it works out <laughs> at least for now oh uh, I was curious if they were gonna put in um, like female Turians, because in Mass Effect 1 and 2, you never see, at least, they're never explicitly, like, stated. I think there could be a, whoa, look at the reflecting on the freaking shiny floor. Anyway, you're never really sure, and it's pretty much canon, I'm pretty sure, that you never see a female Turian or a female Solarian in Mass Effect 1 or 2. It's just, because especially every, every time they talk, it's just men, it's just the men. And they're like, it's okay, we have a sorry. That's an entirely female species, even though it's actually a monogendered species. So, uh, that, that counts. That's enough. Nobody else, that, that's the only people that you can freaking have babies with. Greetings, and welcome to the Presidium. My name is Avina, and I am pleased to be your virtual guide throughout this level of the Citadel Space uh, Station. are you real? What does that mean? I'm an idiot. I am a fully interactive virtual intelligence. I'm, I'm a moron. Program to provide spontaneous guidance at predetermined locations of interest throughout this level of the Citadel. I may also be contacted through any of the Presidium VI terminals, should you require I'm assistance. good. I'll pass. 
I apologize if you found no, no, no. unsatisfactory. You're great. You're great. Please submit any complaints in writing to the city. You're, and visit you're great. Have a nice don't day. even worry about it. I literally just don't want to do <laughs> uh, any of Venus stuff. Right. Oh, so we are supposed to be going up, right? Go to the town. Okay, don't even. Yeah. I won't worry about wandering around right now. Ooh, I like her head. Uh, what is it? Like the, the tattoos she's got going on or the paint. I can't remember. I think they tattoo them, but I think they also paint. I'm not I'm not 100% sure. Have they dulled the colors? No way. One of my favorite things. I don't know about favorite things. You look good. Look at him strutting down the walkway. Um, One of the things I really liked about Mass Effect 1 was that when you're in the Presidium, everybody wore very colorful clothing. And I feel like they've kind of muted it a little bit, or maybe it just stood out extra much in the old one compared to everything else. But I always like, and I feel like in every game, they gradually got duller and duller colored clothing, you know? The art books are so cool when they talk about like the different designs they went through for like the different species and like casual versus formal or like technical work. Or, or anything like that, you know? Oh no, this is not the one I want to go to, but I'm going to poke it. Bye. I, everything is so beautiful. I just... I'm pretty sure this one's the Citadel entrance one. Quick. Let's poke the keeper. Look at that bug thing over there. It can probably hear you, you Please do not disturb insensitive the freaking racist. Please do not disturb uh, the keeper. Oh, excuse me, jeez. Welcome to Presidium Tourism Terminal 2. You are standing near the base of the Citadel Tower, one of the Presidium's most recognizable and important structures. Behind me is the spectacular mm -hmm. relay monument, a scale model representation of a Prothean mass mm -hmm. relay. To your left is one of the keepers, the enigmatic caretakers of the Citadel, working on a control panel. You may see keepers involved in various tasks throughout all levels of the Citadel. We ask that you do not interfere with them in any way. She's so shiny the keepers now. Keepers are essential to the smooth operation of the Citadel. Obstructing their daily work will result in harsh penalties, including incarceration and rehabilitation. Rehabilitation! Anyway, you come into this game, right? And you're like, wow, the keep and the keepers are kind of mysterious. You're like, la la la, that's interesting. I'll help that guy out with his side quest about studying the keepers. That's interesting. But the freaking relay monument, I think, is just like the piece there is a solace of like Mass Effect 1. You're like, oh, it's an art installation. That's cool, you know? And, and freaking <laughs> it's actually like central to the plot tell me more about the tell relay me more. monument discovered by the asari who first arrived at the citadel the relay monument is one of the station's most interesting and controversial features oh is it what is the meaning behind this striking oh that's right it was here first that's is it right a tribute to prothean vanity a reminder of their conquest of the galaxy through mass relay technology or perhaps it is a symbol of unity a Prothean acknowledgement that the relays would eventually lead or, other species or it's to the just Citadel. A Prothean, you know, or just a monument. No one can say for <laughs> sure, making the relay monument a favorite topic of discussion among academics and Does scholars. It really just like the stuff like this, though, like really just like points out the fact that like you can look at like ancient art and like you know ancient tools, ancient architecture, and be like, hmm, I wonder what the deeper meaning of this was. You know, and there are fascinating discussions that come of that, you know, and maybe some of them actually touch on what it actually is. You know, the or get close to the top of what, 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 what whatever art inspiration or reason behind it was there. But, like, it just, it's just funny that this is just kind of like, like sort of like tongue-in-cheek looking at, like, you know, or maybe it's none of those things that you guys think it is, you know? Maybe it's actually, like, a gateway to another dimension, or, yeah, you know, I don't know. Anyway, it's just, I'm not saying it very well. I'm not being very eloquent about it, but I, I like, I don't know. To me, it's like a little nod to, like, 
I think the discussions of like ancient things are very valuable, obviously. Like, I, that's what I kind of do for a living. But it's important to keep our own biases and like the, the, the context of like it being in such a different place and time in those discussions. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Tell me about the Citadel Tower. Housing both the council chambers and Citadel control, the tower is one of the most important buildings on the station. Access to these areas Whoa. is restricted to those with the appropriate clearance. Uh, okay, okay, fine. What happens in Citadel Control? Citadel Control handles all incoming and outbound transit. Every ship within 2,000 kilometers of the Citadel Kilometres. is under the jurisdiction of Citadel Control. At peak capacity, they are responsible Ow. for monitoring upwards of a thousand vessels. Sorry, uh, I have very short headset connected right now, and I just smacked it. I just smacked the cord. I'd like to hear more about the council chambers. The business of the council, which often has far-reaching effects on the galactic community, is conducted in a room at the apex of the Citadel Tower. The council chambers themselves are truly a magnificent sight to behold. Though few get to experience the view in person. Typically, only the counselors, ambassadors, and high ranking officials, along with various support staff, are allowed access. Oh boy, that's just a whole can of worms. What if someone has business with the council? The average citizen must go through the proper channels if they wish an audience with the council. This is usually arranged through their respective ambassadors. Even then, few are given access to the actual council chambers. In most cases, the ambassador acts on behalf of the citizens. In such a massive, like, political galaxy, you know, I feel like... Like, cordoning off your upper political echelon is just... Was, such a, was, a, was a really bad idea, and it is... I don't know, I feel like, I feel like, honestly, in Mass Effect, they should take more, and like, you know, pages out of the Asari book, where it's, like, an actual true democracy, especially with the advent of, like, online technology for them. Like, everybody gets a voice in their politics. It's literally a democracy. It's not a republic. It's a democracy, you know? I'm scheduled to have an audience with the council. Only I'm a showing off. Only visitors to the Citadel are ever granted that privilege. I would be jealous, but that is outside the scope of my Bye. Program. That's all for now. <gasps> Level up! Hang on, I think over here... Oh, did I miss it too? Oh, I probably missed it. Maybe it hasn't happened yet. But at one point in Mass Effect 1, when you look out the balcony from the Ambassador Udina's op office, you can see, an, at least in Mass Effect, the original, you could uh, see an Elcor walking. And it's the only time you ever, in any of the games, that you ever see them moving, but not just standing still. Also, I remember I used to, I had this, like, headcanon story that I think it's the Salarian and the Asari. Uh, they're, like, they, they, they constantly meet up and chat, and I, I don't know why. I just had this whole thing where they were, like, lovers or, like, illicit lovers or something. Dude, this was me after I ran all my errands today. Just not quite, not quite able, just like, oh, I'm done. Please. Okay, is it is it in here? Okay. I don't want to run around too much yet because I want to get the keeper quest and then like whenever I'm running around exploring, I want to get I want to click on them keepers. I always miss one. The council isn't going to ask me any questions, are oh. they? I doubt it. We've made our reports. Now we just have to trust Ambassador Udina. No, we don't. <laughs> I do like Ashley's got some good some good lines. <laughs> Very cynical. I appreciate it. Why would I skip their chatting in the elevator? That's what makes the elevator bearable. I love it. <gasps> oh, look at that. Oh my gosh, we're gonna see him. We're gonna see him in high def. Oh my gosh. It's Garrus! Saren's hiding. <laughs> Give me more time. Stall. Wow. Stall the council. Don't be ridiculous. Your investigation is over, Garrus. Hi. <laughs> Commander Shepard, Garrus Vakari. Garrus Vakari. I was the officer in charge of the CSEC investigation into Sarah. L wow, their the detail like, on like the the pebbling of the skin is so amazing. Who were you just talking to? That was Executor Palin, head of Citadel Security, my boss. He'll be presenting my findings on Saren to the Council. Mm. 
Sounds like you really want to bring him down. I don't trust him. Something about him rubs me the wrong way. But he's a specter. Everything he touches is classified. I can't find any hard evidence. I think the council's ready for us, Commander. Good luck, Shepard. Maybe they'll listen don't to you. Don't get jealous, Caden. It's all right. I romance you. <gasps> Wait. Oh, never mind. Usually the women are the, the lady Salarians or the political ones, and they I feel like they tend to wear the like headdress thing. Like They, they tend to be more in charge of the, pol the politics. At least according, I think according to Mass Effect 3? I don't know when they implement that rule exactly, but... This has always been such a beautiful area. Oh my gosh. Wow, you look so nice. All of you look so nice. The keeper's taking a nap. You, you okay there, little keeper? All right, let's do this. Hang on, I'm gonna go poke him. No, I'm waiting to speak with one of the counselor's assistants. Commander. Oh, yeah, yeah. You gotta talk to the council before you can do anything. Anderson. The hearing's already started. Come on. I'm, I'm sorry. You know, I, I got here sort of as fast as I could. The Geth attack is a matter of some concern. Some concern. There is nothing to indicate Saren was involved wow. in any way. Wow. She's beautiful. The investigation by Citadel Security turned up no evidence to support your charge of treason. An eyewitness saw him kill Nihilus in cold blood. We've read the Eden Prime reports, Ambassador. The testimony of one traumatized dock worker is hardly... How can, What do you mean? I resent these accusations. Nihilus was a fellow Spectre and a friend. It was an eyewitness. That just let you catch him off guard. Captain Anderson, you always seem to be involved when humanity makes false charges against me. And this must be your protege, Commander Shepard. The one who let the beacon get destroyed. The mission to Eden Prime was top secret. The only way you could know about the beacon was if you were there. With Nihilus gone, his files passed on to me. I read the Eden Prime report. I was unimpressed. But what can you expect from a human? Saren despises humanity. That's why he attacked Eden Prime. Your species needs to learn its place, Shepard. You're not ready to join the Council. You're not even ready to join the Spectres. He has no right to say that. That's not his decision. Shepard's admission into the Spectres is not the purpose of this meeting. This meeting has no purpose. The humans are wasting your time, Counselor, and mine. You can't hide behind the Council forever. There is still one outstanding issue. Commander Shepard's vision. It may have been triggered by the Beacon. Are we allowing dreams into evidence now? How can I defend my innocence against this kind of testimony? But we don't... I agree. No! Our judgment must be based no. on facts and evidence, not wild imaginings and reckless speculation. Do you have anything else to add, Commander We Shepard? don't really under... I think even now we don't really understand how Prothean technology works. Like, there has to have been something like this encountered in the past, potentially. Or, I mean, maybe not. Um, but, like... It can't be that crazy of an idea to say that, like, there's, like, biometric information encoded into a Prothean beacon and that, like, it's not translating well, you know, over to, like, a different species' brain, you know? Like, it's not necessarily a vision, it's just a message that's gotten garbled through, like, you know, genetic differences, you know? You've made your decision. I won't waste my breath. They look so good. The Council has found no evidence of any connection between Saren and the Geth. Ambassador, your petition to have him disbarred from the Spectres is denied. I'm glad to see justice. You monster! This meeting is adjourned. Oh, don't be too upset, Udina. It was a mistake bringing you into that hearing, Captain. You and Saren have too much history. It made the Council question our motives. I know Saren. He's working with the Geth for one reason. To exterminate the entire human Close, race. Close, but not quite. Every colony we have is at risk. Every world we control is in danger. Even Earth isn't safe. Tell me about this history between you and Saren. 
I worked with him on a mission a long time ago. Things went bad. Real bad. We shouldn't talk about this here. But I know what he's like. And he has to be stopped. I think Anderson's very passionate about this, but it's because he's he's seen what Saren is capable of, you know? What's our next step? As a Spectre, he's virtually untouchable. We need to find some way to expose him. What about Garrus, that CSEC investigator? We saw him no, no, they just showed up. That's right. He was asking for more time to finish his report. Seems like he was close to finding something. Well, see, that's what frustrates me too, right? Is the council rushed this. And not only that, they didn't give Garrus, the operative in charge of investigating Saren, the clearance to actually read like the like necessary files you know they did they really like you can say like they never said anything directly saying you know like we're hiding saren or we're protecting saren but they desperately like in their political like almost then by not saying anything and by like sort of forcing you know like speeding up this trial and stuff like they're desperately trying to cover up for him also they probably don't want the stuff he's been involved with to be uncovered in some ways because the specter stuff can be very distasteful you know and the council's like no we have to preserve our shining image it's like shut up <laughs> any idea where we could find him i have a contact in c6 who can help us track garris down his name is harkin Forget it. They suspended Harkin last month, drinking on the job. I won't waste my time with that loser. You won't have to. I don't want the Council using your past history with Saren as an excuse to ignore anything we turn up. Shepard will handle this. Now, Captain! You're getting shafted, Captain. Anyway, we really couldn't come up with anybody better than Harkin. Harkin is like the first human. It's almost like a, a, a cautionary tale, you know? He was like the first human led into, I think the first human led into CSEC, right? And then he, because they were trying to like keep him there and like, you know, make sure they had at least some, like the human, you know, council or whatever was trying to make sure they had some grasp on, like, CSEC, like, at least the security of the Citadel, you know, and, like, a more hold in the Citadel, like, a foothold in the Citadel. They basically, like, let him get away with murder, like, almost not even a metaphor, you know? <laughs> and, but they're finally getting rid of him, and it's just, it's so indicative of, like, it's like systemic ish, you know what I mean? Though, um, anyway, I'm sorry. It's just, it's totally like, just letting like people get away with stuff, just because it like gives others an advantage in some way, you know, or just because that's the way the system's always been, you know. And it's they're finally like, at least in this, they're finally like, eh, let's get rid of him. But it's still not enough, in my opinion. Anyway, it's just, it's interesting, right? I don't even know. I don't even think it was intentional, but maybe it was. Right? It's like you know sort of side-eyeing systems that allow people to get away with crap like this <laughs> just because they're special or or it gives somebody else like something you know despite the harm that this individual may cause in their position anyway you can't just cut captain anderson out of this investigation the ambassador's right i need to step aside <gasps> i need to captain! take some business captain meet me in my office later sorry i've been i've been a chatty kathy harkin's probably getting drunk at cora's den it's a dingy little club in the lower section of the wards. I thought you said he was a drunken loser. Couldn't hurt to go talk to him. Just be careful. I wouldn't call him reliable. You and Saren have a history. What happened? About 20 years ago. I was part a of book, a mission by the study way. Verge. I was working with Saren to find and remove a known terrorist It's like threat. the second book, I think? I don't Saren know. eliminated his Maybe the first one. But a lot of people died along the way. Innocent people. And the official records just covered it all up. But I saw how he operates. No conscience. No hesitation. He'd kill a thousand innocent civilians to end a war without a second thought. <laughs> you could either be the monster or, or the saint. Killing innocents doesn't end wars. It causes them. I know how the world works, Commander. Sometimes you're forced to make unpleasant decisions. But only if there's no other way. Saren doesn't even look for another option. He's twisted, broken. He likes the violence, the killing. And he knows how to cover his tracks. Like, right, like, sometimes you do have to make terrible decisions, but, like, you have to try to look for another way, and it's only as a last option. Like, in Mass Effect 3, I think at one point, they sacrificed one planet 
full of billions of people in order to save like three other planets you know and it's a terrible difficult horrendous decision to make and like there's that whole what is not utilitarianism is it utilitarianism I can't remember where it's like the needs of the many outweigh the few, but it, I don't know, there's a whole phil- phil- philosophical like uh, what's the uh, um, debates you could go on about that, and I'm not about to do that right now, even though I talk all the time. Ugh. My ambassador doesn't seem to get along with the council. He's just frustrated. The council's always preaching that we need to be part of the galactic community, but for them, it's a one-way street. They want us to expand and settle unstable regions like the Skillian Verge and the Attican Traverse. But when we run into trouble, they don't want to help us ah, out. Yeah, yeah. Everyone knows it's only a matter of time until we get a seat on the council. The ambassador just thinks it should happen sooner rather than later. And I agree. I don't know. I, there's been interesting stuff online, too, at least a little bit that I saw back when the game first came out. <laughs> um about like how especially and I thought of I thought I thought this since I first started playing but like the whole like not allowing species that are not like necessarily militaristic into the council like that that really just skews like your political like leanings you know what I mean like they only let people into the council if you can provide a military force they're like there's a whole checklist of things it's like no it's literally got to be a military force because the Volus are literally running the economy and they don't have a seat on the council. And of all the species that are on the council, the Volus should have a seat, in my personal opinion. Maybe they'd let us join the council if we were more willing to cooperate with the other species. Of course they would. <laughs> if we did everything they told us to, they'd love to have us on the council. But it wouldn't be much of a deal for yeah, us. Yeah, there's got to be two, a two-way street. I understand their side. They don't want us dominating the council. It's founded on cooperation and alliances. But we have to look out for our own interests, too. That's true. It's fair. Like, it's, it's a balancing act. You don't think much of Harkin. The guy joined CSEC about 20 years ago. He's been an embarrassment to our species ever since. Roughing up suspects in custody, bribery accusations, alcohol and drug use. The embassy used to step in when he got in trouble. But I guess enough was enough. The guy's a scumbag. He should have been cut loose a long time ago. He was one of the first Ah, uh, one of the officers. first. Guess it would have looked bad if he got fired. A lot of backroom deals were worked out over the years to keep him on the force. Politics is a dirty business sometimes. I don't know. But it looks like his time's run out. We've got enough humans in CSEC now to stop protecting. Mm. I want to know more about the Spectres. They're not your typical government agency. They tend to work alone. Behind the scenes. They take care of problems the Council can't. It's not easy preserving peace across an entire galaxy. The Council prefers to use diplomacy and negotiation. But sometimes more extreme measures are needed. Oh man, look at all these questions. How do they decide who becomes a Spectre? You can't just apply to join. There's no training program. Spectres aren't made. They're born. Well, they're made. The Council's always looking for exceptional individuals. People who can get the job Throughout a lifetime. Done, like you. They've been watching you for years. <laughs> oh, that's right. They see something in you. They want you on their side. Nihilus was supposed to give them a final recommendation. But with him gone, things are still that's up in pretty the air. Dope. That's pretty crazy to think, right? Like, they've been watching me for many... I guess hearing how things went were for me in the Skelium Blitz, you know, was... That would be something that would catch your eye, you know? Especially for a species like the humans that are new. And you're like, hmm, interesting, you know? And I think they do want to get humans on the council, but I think they want to kind of make sure that we don't... They don't want to just, like... There's a whole lot of considerations, right? Where, like, the other species will get mad, but they also don't want us to think too highly of ourselves. They're liking you to wait, but they want our militaristic powers. And, like, you know, and, like, uh, the... the what is it, the benefits and stuff that we'll give the council by being there. But we also need to look out for our own interests. And yeah. What's their command structure Nothing. like? There is no command structure. Each specter answers directly to the council. Sometimes they're sent on specific missions. Other times, they act on their own. They tend to operate outside the law, do whatever it takes to accomplish their goals. The council just turns a blind eye. Specters have a lot of power. It's a little crazy that there's like a very open, openly um, outside the law group, like the Spectre, as a tool of the council. Like, yes, diplomacy and negotiation, but if that doesn't work, we'll send our crazy rabbit dogs after you. They sound like shadow operatives. 
Everything about them is classified. We don't even know how many there are. The latest Alliance estimate puts their numbers under a hundred. But the Council couldn't do its job without them. They're the Citadel's top agents. The last line of defense, the final option before open war. The entire galaxy respects and fears them. If a Spectre shows up, you know something big is about to happen. What happens when a Spectre goes rogue, like Saren? It doesn't happen often. The Council is careful when they select their candidates. But when something does go wrong, there's usually only one solution. Send another Spectre to bring the rogue agent down. Oh, dang. That's me. That's gonna be me. I think, uh, other leads? Yeah. Maybe there's another way to find evidence against Saren. You should talk to Barlow oh, yeah, yeah. the financial district. Rumor has it he's an agent for the Shadow Broker. The Shadow Broker? An information dealer. Buys and sells secrets to the highest bidder. I've heard Barlavon's one of the top representatives. He might know something about Saren, but his information won't come cheap. I should go. I should go. Good luck, Shepard. I'll be over I in the ambassador's go. office if you need anything else. I should go. <laughs> I don't know. It's so funny. I can't hear that. I can't hear I should go now without laughing a little bit and repeating it three different ways. Anyway, sorry if this one got a little bit rambly. I'm just excited to be back and not necessarily bothering my, my, you know, I feel like I can talk a little more freely and a little bit more louder because I don't feel like I'm yelling in the center of someone's living room. Anyway, <laughs> thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate it. And I appreciate all your support that you guys have given me in the last little bit. I really do appreciate it a lot. So I hope you all have a fantastic day and I hope to see you in the next one.